What the fuck? Before I start the video, I have been working on this video for 14 straight hours. I did not go to sleep tonight, and I've burned through about 10 cans of coke. So one, please do me a favor and like the video. Two, ignore how tired my voice sounds. And three, if this video doesn't get at least 20,000 views, I'm going to cry. And also, before we get to Cousins to Golden State, which just sounds dirty even saying it out loud for the first time, before that, I would like to send out one massive fuck you to everyone that has ever said that tanking is what is wrong with the NBA. Half of the damn NBA tanked last season because they looked at Golden State's roster and said, screw that, let's just tank. The problem is not tanking. The problem is that there is such a steep difference in talent between the Warriors and the rest of the NBA that there is no point in even trying. Tanking isn't the problem, tanking is a symptom of the problem. Let me repeat that. Tanking isn't the problem, tanking is a symptom of the problem. The Rockets almost seemed like they could do it, but then they went something like 0 for 27 from 3 and Chris Paul got injured. And that was against this team before they added who in my opinion is the second best center in the NBA and a top 15 player in the league assuming that he is healthy. If he is, and he comes back at even just 80% of what he was, he's still the third best player on this team. The Warriors would have two top five players, a top 15 player, and two top 20 players. Unbelievable. Now, let me first say that I'm not mad at the Warriors for doing what they did. The front office's job is to assemble the best team possible, and the Warriors front office have done a better job of that than any other team in NBA history, because this is officially the best team in NBA history. No debate, if it wasn't before already. As a Bulls fan, the 72-10 Chicago Bulls from the 96 season are not touching this team. It is not the front office's job to try and keep the league competitive, and it is also not necessarily the role of the players to keep the league competitive. Though you can go into the morals of, and the nature of competition, and, and the if you can't beat them, join them mentality, you can debate that all day. And yeah, to me personally, DeMarcus signing with the Warriors was a pussy ass move, and it should not be respected. But that opinion doesn't apply to the NBA rulebook and what is considered to be the role of the player in the league. NBA players are supposed to do whatever it takes to win, and part of that comes with free agency decisions. Players that always choose money over winning always get crap, but when Cousins went to the Warriors for less money, he still got crap. But at the same time, like I said, it was a pussy move, so I don't have a problem with that, but it was a move that I don't think he, in a way, should not be allowed to make, but it should be a move that the franchise shouldn't be allowed to make. I don't blame the front office for being allowed to have this happen, and I don't blame them for doing it, and I don't blame the players for following along with those rules as well. What I do blame is the league rule book and Adam Silver. Here's what I propose. The NBA needs to add a rule that limits how much talent you can sign to your team. Let's look at the stats real quick to see just how goddamn stacked this Warriors team is. The starting lineup of the Golden State Warriors has a combined three MVPs, one defensive player of the year, five scoring titles, 25 total all-star appearances, eight all-NBA first team selections, seven all-NBA second team selections, four All-NBA third team selections, three All-NBA defensive first team selections, and one All-Defensive second team selection. There's also two steals leaders in there, just for shits and giggles. It's fucking ridiculous how stacked this team is. And this is not something that the league should allow. Here's the rule that I propose. If a team has two All-Stars, as in guys that were All-Stars this season before the off-season of any potential signings, that team can sign a maximum of two more All-Stars. If the team has three All-Stars, 
again from the season before the offseason, that team can sign a maximum of one all-star. And that's honestly being nice because that still makes the Durant move okay. If that rule was in place, DeMarcus would not be on the Warriors right now because he was an all-star this year, but just didn't end up playing. If you don't think that this rule should be based off of all-star appearances because those can be inconsistent, you could base it off of all NBA selections or something like that. I'd be the first to admit that I should not be the one drafting up this rule entirely, but the concept is definitely there. Now, if you think that this rule is too specific or that it targets the Warriors, well, you don't know much about how the NBA rulebook works. It gets oddly specific a lot. For example, if you're a Celtics fan getting all excited about Cousins leaving because it could mean that Davis is available for a trade, well, you're right. He is available for a trade, but not to the Celtics. Well, at least not this season. There is an NBA rule called the Rose Rule. That rule is essentially a team can have two designated veterans, five year plus players, who received more than 30% of the max at any time. However, they can only have one designated veteran that they traded for with 30 plus percent of the max. Basically, it's against the NBA rules to trade for two players who had the money and the experience in the league that Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis have. Signing them or drafting them is fine, but trading for two of them is actually against the rules because Kyrie is a five-year plus player making more than 30% of the max this year. Same for Anthony Davis. So the Celtics cannot trade for Davis unless the Celtics also trade Kyrie or extend Kyrie when he's on the new Celtics contract. Then he's under contract by the Celtics and that rule no longer applies because he's no longer on the traded for contract. But the Celtics cannot extend Kyrie until the next offseason, which means the Celtics either have to wait for Davis, wait a year, or trade Kyrie. Definitely wouldn't go with that last option. But that just shows you how specific the NBA rulebook can get. A rule like the one I proposed would not be ridiculous at all, and it's kind of surprising that it's never became a rule before. Now you could argue that this never became a rule because there was no precedent, however, I believe there was, and that was 2016, after Durant signed with the Warriors, it should have been pretty damn clear to Adam Silver and every owner in the NBA that something needed to be done to prevent teams from becoming as stacked as the Warriors became with that move. So earlier I said it isn't the job of the Warriors front office to keep the league competitive, and it isn't necessarily the job of DeMarcus Cousins and other players to keep the league competitive, though that is up for interpretation but it is 110% the job of the league office to keep the league competitive. It is in the league's best interest to keep the fans happy. And the way you do that is by giving the league parity. If the league has just one team and that dominates the other 29 teams, you will lose fans. And I think the biggest portion of fans you do lose will be the largest percentage of fans you have, which is casual fans. I'm going to watch the NBA regardless of what happens. Though this Warriors team is stacked, and there's no one really beating them, I'm still going to watch non-Warriors games. I can still enjoy watching Donovan Mitchell dunk all over the Rockets, or Kyrie Irving get a crazy crossover. The Warriors don't change that for me, because I love this game and this league so much that regardless of whatever state it is in, I will always watch it. But that doesn't apply to the casual fan. When shit goes bad, a casual fan is gonna dip. The league stands to lose part of its fan base and in turn lose profit because of the lack of limits on the talent a team can acquire. Especially because what Boogie has done could very well set a precedent. I don't believe Cousins when he says that he received no offers. I just think he received no offers that he wanted. No offers that paid him for multiple years. I'm certain he got plenty of short-term 10 to 12 million dollar a year deals, probably a few one year plus a team option deals. So he decided I can take 10 mil for one season or take 5 mil and guarantee myself a championship. And him choosing to do that could lead to other star players doing something similar. Not necessarily any star, but 
any other star player that is in a situation where they aren't being offered their worth for one reason or another. Why not just go win yourself a ring for less money and get paid later? It's honestly scary. I've also seen a lot of people downplay this, like it's not that big of a deal, there's a chance that Boogie isn't himself when he gets back and he's only going to play 30 regular season games in the playoffs, and then after this season he's going to get his ring and then go chase his money on another team. Which is true, there is a good chance that happens. With the potential of that team, whether Cousins is a big part of that team or no, is ridiculous. The precedent of him being able to go there in the first place, regardless of the result, is terrifying. So it's not necessarily about the move directly as much as it is about the principle. The fact that a team that won 58 games, that has four all-stars and two top five players, was able to add a center that last season averaged 25.2 points, 12.9 rebounds, 1.6 blocks, and 5.4 assists is unacceptable. That shouldn't be in the realm of possibility for a team that stacked. Call it the DeMarcus Cousins rule. No franchise with three or more all-stars can sign more than one all-star in free agency. And that should apply to free agency only because you can't punish teams for drafting all-stars because the Warriors did draft three of their five all-stars. Three of five all-stars. That statement is fucking ridiculous. So Adam Silver, if you're watching, you slender man looking ass, please do the league a favor and put the Cousins rule into place. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to wait. Before I sign off, Anthony Davis wore Boogie's jersey in the All-Star game after he went down with his Achilles injury. And when the Pelicans were a surprising team in the later parts of the season and in the playoffs, when any reporter asked Davis how good they had been, Davis would always bring up how much better they would be with Cousins. This man could have gloated about himself playing at an MVP level, but instead he made sure that no one forgot about Cousins. Man, 